Hey, thanks for sticking with us. This is Real Estate Chalk Talk. We're broadcasting from the Rack Shack Barbecue Studio here in the Twin Cities. I'm Keith Hittner Sr. here in the studio with Keith Hittner Jr. And you can reach us at 612-627-8000. That's 612-627-8000. We have been uh, visiting with Sean Morrissey with Morrissey Builders. Uh, we've been talking about green homes, passive uh, passive. Uh, the passive house, and uh, and we last uh, time we went out, we were talking about uh, that you were making the first passive house in South Minneapolis, kind of retrofitting a house. Is it? That one's not technically a, a passive house, but it's using a lot of the principles. But okay. It's, uh, but it's a. Um, it's a well, I don't want to get into it. It's a whole other type World. of strategy. One but, question but, I but have. But basically, is, I do want to get to zero energy, but they're using different strategies to get there. It so. seems like any time cool. that there's some of this technology that comes in. Uh, you know, the green technology, so-called energy savings, you know, at, from a cost basis at the end of the day, you know, it costs more. And so if you're, if you're, if you just want to be green for the sake of being green or being sustainable or whatever it is, but when you when you got a, a bean counter like me, who, you know, I don't really care about any of that. I just want something that costs less to operate. Senior doesn't care about the environment. He cares uh, you about know, everybody pocket. wants clean water and clean air, but some of the <laughs> stuff, you know, it just, I still want to have, I don't want it to cost me more sure because I don't if it's costing more than it's taking more resources to generate that revenue which is just shifting I see it as it's just shifting the effort into some other area but good cover but now oh it's true but, no, but just now you've got, your heart. <laughs> where costs are coming down in some of these areas can you address that a little bit and the other thing that scares a lot of people is they first of all having a bunch of solar panels is ugly you know, so nobody wants to have, I mean, I have, I have this vision of these old, you know, 20 years ago solar panels when they used to have water lines running up and down on the, on the roof and all that stuff, and they were just, they were ugly. And they created a problem with freezing uh, snow and ice damming and all of that stuff. How has that technology changed through the years? Uh, and, and has any of the scariness come out of it uh, in terms of maintenance of some of these things? How do you maintain this stuff? Well, I think I think most of the things that we have currently in the market, say the last 20, 30 years, they've all been refined. So mm -hmm. a lot of things that were maybe 15, 20 years ago, even like photovoltaic panels, a house I built about 8, 10 years ago, the cost that I paid for those, you know, it's probably about 25, 30 percent of that. So it's about 75 reduction with, mm -hmm. with, the, with the federal rebates. And do they work better? They work better, they're more energy efficient, and they just cost less because there's there's more of a demand to become more energy efficient in their production also. And how long does something like that last? And what's the life expectancy of it? Um, most brands are going to be looking at 20 to 30 year warranty on the panels. Warranty so, on the panel. Yeah. And then that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to need to be replaced in 20, that's just when the warranty runs out. Yeah, that, so they're very simple technology now and they should last a very long time. So mm -hmm. the lifetime depending on the panel is probably 25, maybe 30, 40 years in that range. 40 the, years is yeah. going to get me out. So, <laughs> don't worry about yeah. that. Measuring your life in light bulbs and uh, solar panels. And, uh, so, um, <laughs> so then that's really for, for, and then the cost of upfront cost versus, you know, you have this huge upfront investment, but then it lowers your operating costs on yeah. a monthly basis. What's the payback on something like that? Well, well most people, you know, if they're really energy um, sensitive, they're going to spend the money in spite of what the cost may right. be. But most people are sort of looking for that intersection where, where the design and costs and all those things intersect. And generally that might be investing 5 to 10% more in a project. But usually those things have very short-term short payback. For example, um, another thing that's very common, they use it a lot in Canada, but we don't use it here, it's a, it's a wastewater heat exchanger. That's, I saw that. And so about 40% of the homes in, in Canada use this. It's so common. They sell, they sell it at, um, at Home Depot. So basically when you take a shower, it's preheating the cold water before it goes in a hot water heater. And that can save about 20, maybe even more, you know, if you have a bunch of kids or teenagers that mm -hmm. take long showers. Um, it can save that much on your hot water heating bill. It has no moving parts. It, very, very simple technology. So to build a very energy efficient house or, or project or even remodel, people think that there's like one magic bullet. You do the photovoltaic panels or you insulate. But usually it's, it's more design based. It doesn't cost that much. It's mm -hmm. being very thoughtful mm -hmm. and doing a lot of little things that make a really big difference. Another thing I noticed on your website was, uh, you know, we have tuck under garages, a lot of you know, have tuck under garages or attached garages or whatnot, where you've got living space above the garage. And you're actually putting a ventilation fan in the garage uh, to, to vent the fumes from the automobile out to keep it from penetrating the house. I saw that on your website. I thought, well, that's an interesting 
design factor. Who would have ever thought of that? But what a great idea. Well, we don't want carbon monoxide in the home, right? I know it. So can you just fire your truck up in the garage then and let her go? or? No, it's it's designed just pretty much like a regular garage. It's on a timer. So when the garage door closes, you can set it to run maybe for five or ten minutes to remove that exhaust. And it's, not, it's just a health thing. So basically yeah. that carbon monoxide is not coming into the home. It's Minnesota. Funny it isn't mandatory. Yeah. Everything's <laughs> mandatory in Minnesota. Everything's mandatory. Uh, okay, very good. Uh, we could talk about this, and I, and I would invite you to come back at another time where we can pick up this conversation because I could go on forever. Sean Morrissey, ladies and gentlemen, with Morrissey Builders, 651-207-6023, 651-207-6023. Sean, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Morrissey Builders, two R's, two S's, Morrissey Builders. Dot com. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you for having me. Where there's a lot of uh, new construction going on right now is in the lovely city of Rosemount. Dean, you live in Rosemount? I do indeed. Well, if you want to find know. Dean, you might be able to find him in Rosemount. But there's a lot of new construction. Go Irish. Go Irish. There's a lot of new construction going on in Rosemount. Speaking of Go, Go Irish, do you know what uh, Rosemount was once going to be named? Oh, I shudder to think. Come on. Uh, Being a Rosemount guy, most the, people would probably never know. The that. city itself? Or yeah, the, the city itself. The city itself was uh, incorporated in 1972, just 1972. Really? Yeah. What is it? Saratoga. No way. It was going to be named Saratoga, really? but they wanted to keep the Irish roots, uh, so they did name it Rosemount. The city itself is not that old, so we see a lot of expansion happening in Rosemount. Uh, a lot of large builders and small builders in the city of Rosemount. We have a couple of cool new construction projects going on right now in Rosemount. One of our very good mortgage partners is building a home in Rosemount and some past clients moving out into a bigger property. We're finding that Rosemount is a, a pretty big draw for folks right now to uh, to find a new home. And you built a new home in Rosemount, didn't you? Hey, well, about 10 years ago yeah. now, but yes. Uh, when we were building in Rosemont 10 years ago, we were we were kind of taking a flyer. We, yeah, were, right. we were looking at Lakeville, and that was the, the place to be seemingly at the time, and we could save a little money in Rosemont. But right now, yep. uh, Rosemont is kind of like Lakeville was 10 years ago. You know, something so. that is exactly right, Rosemont has definitely come online because it was, it was about 10 years ago when we were building, uh, well, when we had RHS. And so then we had RHS and we had RHS uh, River City Homes as, yep. as a part of that group. And, and uh, we were doing some building in Rosemont. It was kind of tough. You know, I mean, it was great areas and all that, but, you know, they weren't flying off the shelf. Yep. Um, but yep. Now, Prices are still a little bit less, so you can get yeah. a little more house for your money uh, when comparing the city of Lakeville to Rosemount or the city of Apple Valley to Rosemount. But uh, there's a great amount of new construction going on there right now. Plus, we have a couple of secret sales in Rosemount. Uh, a lot of action going on in Rosemount right now. We have a property that's on the market, not MLS. It's three thirty nine nine. Uh, this is a, a new home, or not a new home, but a, a resale home, rather, over 3,000 square feet. Senior, you're going to be showing this property. Yes, I am. Uh, Three-car garage, four bedrooms upstairs. If it's not sold by then, mm. you could call us any time about properties you hear on the air here, 612-627-8000. Dandy house, though, remodeled kitchen, uh, some newer windows in the property, walkout basement, backs up to a park. Very nice home on a cul-de-sac. It's almost an acre, isn't it? Almost an acre. This one's three quarters, almost an acre, so a very good size lot as well. Uh, and then another property is going to be coming online. In, uh, it's actually available right now to show, but it's not going to be on the MLS. You I'm going to be looking at that one, too. You're going to, you're going to check out that one, mm -hmm. too. That's also on uh, it's on Crocus Way. Price point on that one is three twenty nine nine, so $10,000 less than this other property. Uh, about four or five bedrooms. I can't remember off the top of my head. Five bedrooms, uh, three bathrooms, three car garage, big huge unfinished space in the basement as well. Uh, two walkouts on this property, nice fenced in lot, very nice home. So nice homes in Rosemount in that 300 to 350 price point in uh, in the lovely city of Rosemount. It used just to be it was going to be called Saratoga, but before you, uh, they before went with you Rosemount. Go on. I just want to mention that this is a a good example of of what true brokerage is all about and having a, a business network. Uh, we have uh, clients that we're working with uh, that actually uh, called off of a home that we had sold in their neighborhood, and we're, we're, uh, we've listed their property. But it's coming on the market in spring because they're, they're doing some work and getting it ready. They've got kids who want to get through Christmas and all of that. 
Uh, Keith Arino has a couple of properties in Rosemont that just happens to be uh, a match for the property that they want to move up to. Mm -hmm. Another team member of ours has a client that he's working with in Northeast Minneapolis who needs to get down to Egan because that's where family is. They're looking for a Rambler. That's the home that we listed. And so all of this work and, and these properties are being viewed by people who, who are interested in moving. Their homes are not currently on the market. They have the advantage of being able to look at properties and look at homes that meet their needs. Uh, before anyone else gets a chance to yep. get in there and, and take a look at yeah, it. Yeah, people think, uh, you know, the place to be is online, and there's no question that online is where a lot of people start, but you're not going to see all the information. These are deals that are being put together uh, completely off a computer anywhere. We're, we're uh, just networking in with our own team, and then coupled with the, uh, the great real estate community that we have here in the metropolitan area, people that are actually doing transactions, you can get off the computer and give us a call at 612-627-8000, and we can help you sell and buy as well. 612-627-8000.